Hi everyone and welcome to this webinar on analyzing options in Bar Chart for Excel. Bar Chart for Excel allows you to easily access market data and integrate it with your own models and workflows all within Excel. So whether you're a trader, an analyst or an investor, Bar Chart for Excel can help you make informed decisions and stay ahead of the market. In today's webinar, I'll provide an overview of Bar Chart for Excel and its main features um, and demonstrate how to use some of its many tools and functions. I'll also come cover some of the more advanced features uh, that I use to help find and analyze option trades. So just a little bit about me, for those that don't know me, um, I'm Gavin McMaster, I'm the founder of Options Trading IQ, um, a self-taught trader. I've been trading options since 2004, um, makes me feel quite old. <laughs> and I've been teaching other traders about options since 2010. So I've been at this for quite a while. Um, and I also write a daily uh, column on options uh, here at Bar Chart. So happy to be here today. Welcome to the webinar. Just before we start, uh, a quick disclaimer that decisions to buy, sell, hold, or trade in securities, commodities, and other investments involve risk and are best made based on the advice of qualified financial professionals. Any trading in securities or other investments involves the risks of substantial loss. The practice of day trading involves particularly high risks and can cause you to lose substantial sums of money. Before undertaking any trading program, you should consult a qualified financial professional. Please consider carefully whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial conditions uh, and ability to bear financial risks. Under no circumstances shall we be held liable for any loss or damage you or anyone else incurs as a result of any trading or investment activity that you or anyone else engages in based on the information or material received through barchart.com and our services. Um, and also just a note that um, any advice provided today is general in nature, does not take into account your personal circumstances. Okay, so plan for today, we'll go through a beginner's overview of Bar Chart for Excel, um, give you a quick idea of how to use some of the, the basic functions, how it all works. We'll take a look at how to access historical options data. We'll look at loading an options screener in Excel, creating option lists, and one of my favorite things, analyzing volatility in Bar Chart for Excel. So towards the end, some of my favorite features um, that I think you'll really love. Then we'll talk about how you can sign up for a free no credit card trial. So with that said, let's get stuck into it. So within your Excel, you'll have uh, an, an extra ribbon or, or heading here in the, the toolbar called Bar Chart. And we've got various functions and things that we can do. So I'm just gonna walk you through some basic um, functions first, and then we'll get to some of the more exciting stuff towards the end. So Firstly, if we want to just bring in some quotes, like you can see here, this is all updating in real time, which is really cool. Um, we can come up here, click on the quote button, and you'll see this modal pop up. Um, this is pretty standard across most of the functions here, so you'll get pretty familiar with this. And from here, we can either type in a stock, and we can drag it across here to add it, or we can double click to add. Um, so we could do multiple stocks. We could even come in here and go uh, indices, US indices, and let's say we want to add um, the Dow Jones. I can double click that, and that's going to add um, Dow Jones. And also under stocks, we can add them by index as well. Um, if we want to have all of the underlying um, Dow Jones stocks, we could double click that uh, as well. Actually, I've got to expand one more line. And then that gives us all the, the stocks in the Dow Jones. So I can add them one by one, or if I hold down shift and scroll down, I can then add all of those stocks really quickly and easily into here. And down the bottom, we have the available columns that we can bring into our Excel file as well. Of course, we've got our custom views that we've um, set up in barchart.com. So that all comes through into um, bar chart for Excel, if there's a particular custom view that I want to look at, or I can manually uh, add and remove any of these column headings quite easily. Um, if there's others that I want to add, 
So I'll show you how to re-add the opinion, the bar chart opinion. We can just type that into the field here. And we can add these very quickly uh, and easily. And then when we're ready, we can just go insert. And you can see how quickly and easily that information comes into our Excel file. Uh, we've got all our column headings that we selected. We've got our 52-week highs, market cap, uh, our beta, and our opinion ratings over here that we added towards the end there. So really, really quick, really easy um, to set this up. And then anytime we open this file, these numbers will um, update with live data during market hours. So really, really cool stuff. Um, and that could help you um, streamline some of your trading processes. We can also go and add um, some stock history if we want to do some back testing on stocks. Very, very simple. I'll show you how to do this. If we go up to our history tab, type in our ticker. And we can just go with the default or we can select uh, a date range and bring in pretty much as much data as we want. And really quickly comes in and that allows us to a lot of back testing. Again, we can um, don't really need our, our Greeks on this particular view, but we can again go to edit fields and we can add in uh, anything that we like in terms of our fields. So quite simple, those first few things. Then if we go to stock lists, we can create some or bring in some lists as well. So again, this is all going to update uh, in real time, which is really cool. So again, if I want to add in a list, we've got our list section here. And we've got all of our pre-prepared uh, stock lists, which is very cool. So volume leaders, um, indices, trading signals, um, or today's top stocks. We can select those default stock lists. Again, we can choose or adjust our column headings and insert those very, very quickly and easily. The other thing we can do is bring in option lists as well. So again, I'll demonstrate how to do that. Again, under lists, if we go to options, we've got our market pulse option lists that we can add. So we could look at most active options. We'll fetch 100 rows. We can choose stocks, ETFs or indices, but you know, usually I'm going to be looking at stocks. and insert. So there's all our top stocks by option vol, uh, option volume, which is really cool. So we can see the most active underlying tickers for the day. And then we can drill down into some of these shortly um, and do a bit more analysis on individual names that we might be interested in. I don't really do too much with futures or currencies, um, but we've got some lists there that can be brought in as well. And of course, ETFs also. Moving on to option prices, we can start to bring in uh, our option chains and we can bring in lots of information here, including bid ask, our last price, delta, implied volatility, all that sort of cool stuff. So this is where it starts to get a li little bit more interesting and exciting in terms of um, how we can use Bar Chart Excel to analyze and potentially find um, some nice option trades. So again, if we want to bring in option prices, we go back to our quick data and select option prices. Choose Apple, double click that to bring that in. And then we can decide which expirations we want to take a look at. We could use our default uh, headings here and select all the monthlies. 
or we could just look at the weeklies or all of them. Now, I don't want to bring in too much data, so I'm just going to look at the May monthly options. And then we can choose how many strikes around the midpoint or the at the money strike that we want to use. The default is 10. So I'm going to stick with that. And again, we can bring lots of Greeks in here. I've got Delta, but maybe we want to look at um, Vega as well. And even Theta, we can start to bring in our option Greeks as well as column headings. So there you go, really quick and easy to bring that all in. We've got our implied volatility of each strike, and we'll talk about that in a bit more detail shortly. We've got the deltas, um, Vega, Theta as well. Um, I guess I could have rearranged those and put the Greeks all together. Um, and we've got our calls and our puts, and very, very quick to bring all that information in. Another awesome thing you can do with Bar Chart Excel is bring in historical option prices. So again, this can be really helpful if you want to do a bit of back testing or you want to see how uh, an options delta and vega and theta have changed over time. So lots and lots of historical uh, option information and data that we can bring in here. And if people are pretty savvy with Excel, um, there's lots of things you could do with this information um, in terms of back testing. So show you how to bring in the historical prices. Hit the history icon. Go SPY and we'll hit options. And we can select our expiration date. Let's say I want to see the May expiration. Double click that and I can choose the strike prices that I want to view. Uh, let's say I want to look at the 420 calls and puts, and I want to see the information on those strikes for the last couple of weeks. I'm just going to drag those across. So this will bring us in, bring in our data from April 3rd to today. So really, really quick. And we can see how our delta is changing over time. We can see how our vega is changing over time and also our theta. So we've got our calls on the left, our puts on the right. So huge amount of data that you can bring in here, um, which is really, really helpful for back testing purposes. Um, I think you can actually bring in um, expired options as well. Um, so if you want to do some really serious back testing, you want to go back and look at um, options from January this year that have already expired, you can bring all of that historical data in as well. In terms of our time and sales data, we can bring that in also. Um, very, very cool. So we can potentially see some unusual options activity. We can drill into that detail um, through our time and sales data. Um, so if we go uh, history, and we just change from daily to top of book, and this will basically give us our time and sales data. Um, let's say. From yesterday to today, I'm not sure how much data this is going to bring in. It might be a bit too much, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to cancel that. That might have been a bit too much. Ah, there we go. So it did come in. 
really interesting data that we can then drill in um, if there's large volumes coming in we can see whether they were traded at the bid or the ask price and we can see um, if there was a large uh, put order purchased at the ask price we know that's a large order to buy those puts and we could potentially follow those big institutional trades we've got um, all our option screeners available as well so under analysis if we go screeners and we've got stock screeners we've got ETF screeners and option screeners all of these will feed in directly from uh, barchart.com so any uh, screeners that you've got set up on barchart.com will be available here as well so I've got a couple here that we can look at we've also got um, some default screeners that can be used as well and here we can see uh, our parameters that we're looking for so basically looking here out of the money bets anything with a good volume to open interest ratio so anything where there might be again some unusual option activity we can do multiple symbols at the one time if we just separate these symbols by a comma um, I've got quite a few maybe 15 symbols in here that we're going to look at and we can add any uh, filters or screener parameters that we want to look for so looking for things with decent option volume where the ratio of volume to open interest is more than one and if we insert that we're seeing you know some interesting data that we could then potentially come and see okay there's a fair bit of volume here in the Apple 120 puts we could go and drill in using the time and sales data um, and see whether this was a buy or a sell of those puts um, so we can scroll down here and see anything with you know anything with sort of unusual vo volume um, some action going on in Netflix here the volumes a lot bigger than the open interest um, so that can be a really quick way again we're looking at multiple different stocks here that are coming into our screener um, can be a great way to find unusual options activity that can help um, give us some ideas of trades that we might like to make uh, we can also bring in stock screeners so again I've got a couple here that I like to use on barchart.com so we can bring these in to our Excel file as well Again, we've got all our default um, parameters that we can search for or if we prefer we can bring in our screeners that are available on barchart.com so again that brings in all of the parameters from that screener looking for any stock that's a, a large cap stock with good volume where the IV percentile is above 70 so not too many at the moment volatility is pretty low in the market right now um, but that's bringing it in um, our three stocks here and our IV percentile you can see here uh, all above 70 so that can provide some potential trade ideas uh, for stocks with high volatility or low volatility um, another scanner that I like to use is a 50-day moving average scanner so stocks crossing above or below the 50-day moving average again really simple to bring those in if I've got it set up on barchart.com I can easily just add that scanner here and it's all pre uh, filled in for me and I can insert that and get my new list of stocks that are making I'll get rid of that column and that one so we're getting some buy and sell signals on some of these stocks and we can see the strength and the direction as well so this is something that I'll do is to look at these screeners on the individual stocks and then I'll drill into these names um, and look at some of the implied volatility data um, potentially the time and sales um, could be a great way to find option trade ideas so now we can get into some of the more uh, exciting things on bar chart for Excel um, some really cool functions here 
that we can bring in. We can look at a, an IV chart of an individual stock and we can potentially set up a tab here with multiple implied volatility charts for different stocks and you know I find this really helpful because previously I'd have to go into my broker and I'd have to look at these one by one or any sort of external source and you're looking at them one by one whereas I can potentially set up you know the, the top 15 20 stocks and just quickly scroll through their IV charts we can see the yellow line is the implied volatility of the at the money strikes and the blue line is the historical volatility so we can see here particularly with Apple if we focus on the the orange line we can see when implied volatility gets down to that 20 level that's quite a low level of volatility for Apple so that can be a good time to look at uh, strategies for buying options or going long volatility in Apple and conversely when implied volatility gets up to that 40 level and slightly above you know that's historically in the last 12 months a bit of a, an extreme or a high level for volatility for Apple we'd have a really high IV rank and IV percentile during these periods that can be a good time to look at option selling strategies so really simple to bring this data in we use our volatility function double click to bring that across and we've got our implied volatility index 30-day IV and I usually like to get rid of the volume I prefer to, to not have any volume on there um, just reduces the noise a little bit on the chart and we can insert that there it looks like I forgot to add the the historical volatility but in any case we can see the blue line this in this case is the implied volatility I'm just going to add that again and I'll add the historic volatility um, so we've got our implied volatility there and our historic volatility there which I forgot to select and that comes in really really quickly we can expand that out a little bit and now we can see our Microsoft IV The next function that I think is uh, really, really awesome um, is our max pain data. So there's a theory with options that big institutions, market makers, um, generally net sellers of options uh, because they're they're buying or selling those options to, to the people that are buying, and then they have to ideally they want to have the the options that they're selling. They want the stock to finish at the point where they're going to make the most amount of money, right? Which is the max pain level for people who are buying options. And really cool function. All we have to do is change our ticker in these yellow cells and change our expiration date. We can look at any any expiration date, and we can see both graphically and um, in a table format where the level of max pain is for each particular stock. So at this level here around 185 187 and a half this is the level where all of the open options in the market for that stock and that expiration period that's where they'll have the least amount of value at expiration so we can see that here the exact strike is 185 and we get that really quickly up here in our data as well so we can potentially use that information to construct a trading strategy where we might say, right, we think Tesla's gonna pin that 185 strike next week. So we might trade a butterfly or a calendar spread centered around that 185 strike. So you can see how quickly that, that data updates when we change our ticker. really really quick so Apple max pain right here at the 165 strike it's where the options will have the least amount of value so that's a really helpful thing um, that some people like to look at um, and potentially construct trading strategies around that 
this is probably my favorite piece of bar chart for Excel. And this is looking at the term structure of each individual stock as well. So term structure just means um, what is the volatility level across different expiration periods? So here we can see Tesla short term volatility is really high. OK, so we've got earnings. This is, this is always going to be impacted by earnings. High volatility in the front months or the front weeks and volatility gets a bit lower as we go out in time. So that's a situation called backwardation. The normal market situation that you would expect to see is called contango, where volatility is low in the short term options and higher in the longer term options. And what I love about this feature is I've got, you know, the 10 or 15 most active options uh, tickers, and I can just quickly scroll down and look at the term structure of each stock. And then that can be a potential way to find trade ideas as well. So we can see there's a lot of um, backwardation here in Meta. Again, related to earnings, uh, that looks like the, the April 28th strike. And that's next week. So that's earnings next week, I believe. The earnings announcement is going to have the biggest impact on those short term options. So the volatility is really high. And we can see that there's a lot more skew in Meta um, than, say, Microsoft. There's, there's more backwardation in Meta. So really cool being able to just scroll down and have a quick look at any of these stocks. JP Morgan's already uh, reported earnings. So that's in more or less contango where we've got lower volatility at the front, higher volatility at the back. So I'm not aware of any other uh, platform that allows you to do this and look at multiple stock term structures um, in the one uh, platform. Previously, I would have to go into my broker and I'd have to manually go and look at all those um, expiration periods. I'd have to look at the option chains look at where the volatility is, and that's just giving me the actual volatility number. What I love about this is we're getting it in a, a graphical format. Um, so I really like that as well. And we can look at multiple stocks at one time rather than um, going through one by one. So to look at our term structure, again, we go to our volatility section. And we'll choose our stock. And we want to change now to term structure. And I just want to look at the 30 day IV. So I'm going to remove all of these ones. And then we go to our expiration. And we can quickly select all of our expiration periods, or we could just do the monthly, weekly. Um, I quite like adding all of them. And we can see there our term structure now for Boeing. Another thing we can do is we can look at the skew between the out of the money puts and the out of the money calls. So again, this can be a good way to find some trade ideas if we're seeing excessive skew in a particular stock. Uh, we can see Tesla out of the money puts are trading at higher volatility than the at the money puts. So again, we can potentially construct option trading strategies around that if we think the skew is too extreme. Similar with Apple, we're seeing a lot of skew here between the out of the money puts. Those five delta puts are trading at about 34.62 volatility, whereas the, the 50 delta or the out the money is about 24% volatility. So quite a bit of skew in Apple. Again, I've got all the major stocks set up here and I can quickly scroll and look at all of these very, very quickly and easily and maybe something jumps out at me that there's some excessive skew in a particular name and then we can look at option trading strategies around that. So to add a new one we go to volatility, choose our stock, And now we want to look at 
implied volatility curves. And we want to use the put call slope. And there we're getting our Boeing skew. So some very, very cool functions there. We've also got uh, all our watch lists that we can bring in, portfolio, all that sort of stuff. Um, what I love about this file that I've created here, every time I open this up, this updates with live data, um, which was something that just came out recently, which I think is really cool. So every time we open the file, we're seeing the current vol smile, the current term structure, the current max pain level that we've got set up, it's all updating for us based on the current market data. If you're interested, there's also lots of um, templates and instructions uh, available that you can work through. Um, so there's some good examples of other things that you can do in bar chart Excel there. Okay, so that's the bulk of the presentation today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Does anybody have any questions? Um, we can take those uh, now. Of course, um, Bar Chart support team is available for any questions as well. Um, so the Max Payne spreadsheet that we were looking at, that's available from the templates. Just kind of show that here. You can see there's lots of instructions here on all the data that you can bring through. Um, I think that's under volatility and it might be on the main home screen. Yeah, but it'll be in there somewhere and you can download a template and basically you don't have to recreate it from scratch because that's a, a pretty full on sheet, right? Um, you can just download the template and then all you need to do is update the stock and the expiration, and that'll automatically uh, be filled in for you. Okay, so another question here, does bar charts for Excel have any way of measuring put skew to call skew? So, yeah, we can do that as well. Uh, again, if we go to our volatility, if we want to look at the NASDAQ, and we choose our risk reversal. And again, I'm just gonna take the volume off so it's a bit cleaner. And we can choose our expiration. Let's say uh, the main monthly. And there we get our history of the put call skew. So again, another thing that might be helpful if we're starting to see some excessive skew between the puts and the calls, that can potentially be a way to find a trade idea as well. Uh, another question here, does a bar chart for Excel offer any backtesting capabilities? So yes, there's plenty of backtesting you can do through the history uh, icon, both with stocks and options. The other thing here that you can do that is very cool is we can apply studies to our stock and we can potentially look at um, a simple moving average strategy um, and we could look at we could bring in a 50 and a 200 day moving average and we could look at a golden cross and see how that has performed in the past. So yeah, definitely some really good back testing you can do and a lot of these studies here as well, you might like to play around with. And another question, can I sync my account from barchart.com in Excel? Yes, so all your custom views, watch lists, portfolios and screeners will all be available in bar chart for Excel as well. Um, so all our lists, 
we've got our watch list and the screeners. We've got stock, ETF and option screeners. Anything that you have on varchart.com will be available here in Varchart for Excel. So if you're interested, you can access a free bar chart for Excel trial. So you can sign up at barchart.com slash Excel to get a 14 day trial to get started. So no credit card required. Um, you can go and have a play around and see how you like it. I, I really love it. I, I do use the, um, particularly the term structure and a lot of that volatility information. Um, I use that almost daily. Um, to try and find trade ideas. So check it out, highly recommend. Um, you just try the trial. Um, some very, very cool stuff in there. Yeah, hope you enjoyed today's webinar and you found it useful. If you have any questions, uh, Bar Chart support team is always available to help. So if there's no other questions, um, I'll sign off and say thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, please reach out if you have any questions.